Man, season one has been uh, something so far. And honestly, this video is like two to two and a half weeks later than I had hoped to get it up. But there have been so many changes to XP values across Vanguard and Warzone that with things being adjusted, removed altogether, or whatever it may be, the moving targets have been kind of too fast to nail down anything in particular. Now, as things are seemingly subsiding a bit and landing to that more static column of things, and hopefully we don't see too many changes on the horizon, I want to take some time today and talk about what I think are some of the best ways to rank up your weapons now across Vanguard and Warzone, the fastest and most efficient ways to rank up your weaponry. The integration of weapons into Warzone and that ability to rank up these guns if you don't have Vanguard, if you're a free-to-play user, you just didn't want to pick it up, whatever the case, it offered some faster ways to level things for some people that may change the game or for others, maybe not. So I want to run down some of the methods here you'll be seeing and what may be most beneficial to you. As we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. What are you having the best experiences with in terms of ranking up your weapons with? Is it the traditional MP experience for you, or maybe the introduction of leveling via Warzone is a game changer? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video and you find it at all insightful, do me a favor, drop a like on the video. And if you think you know somebody that could benefit here from this, feel free to send it to them. And finally, if you guys also are new to the channel, you'd like to help us out on the road to half a million subscribers, hit that subscribe button to stay with all things Vanguard, Warzone, loadouts, tips and tricks, news and information, we've got you covered here on the channel. So if you're part of that nearly 7% of viewers who are not subscribed, I'd love to have in the community. That said, let's jump right into it. Firstly, let's talk about each of the ways that you can rank up. Of course, you do have, with your Vanguard weaponry, the ability to rank up your weapons in Vanguard. These are probably the most standard, the most obvious ones, and some things we've talked about already, but to just kind of cover and touch base on everything here in this video, talking about everything all in one place, I wanna to touch on this here a little bit. Now, multiplayer, this is standard. That's kind of the obvious one. This method is one of a handful, but the most commonplace and common sense. Ranking up through kills, objective play, and just overall time put in in multiplayer of Vanguard. Vanguard, ranking up your Vanguard weapons. It could be what you find easiest, or for a myriad of different reasons, it may not be your favorite. Personally for me, if you're going for camos or at all care about atomic, this is no doubt the easiest to kill two birds with one stone. Get your camo challenges done as you rank up your weapon, but at the same time, if you don't want to deal with things like skill-based matchmaking, the maps you play on, the modes on offer, the weapons you're ranking up may be awful at the beginning, but you want those attachments for ranking it up in Warzone, whatever the case, it is the most common place, but also the easiest to think of okay, well, what else can I do to rank this up instead of playing MP? Now, the nice part about this for MP is that you at least have a few different modifiers you can normally take advantage of on top of just playing for regular kills and things like that. Camo challenges, career challenges, operator favorite weapon XP bonuses, clan XP bonuses, PlayStation bonuses, and overall some other general pacing bonuses all help to increase this number for your XP yield on your weapons slowly but surely. Playing shipment 24-7 may be hell, but it's a more steady stream of XP than maybe say if you're contract farming and plunder or or having a great pull when you do so. That said, though, when it comes to Vanguard's MP in regards to ranking up, one thing that you definitely can and consciously can make a difference with is the particular changes you have in accordance to the game modes and pacings you play. According to Sour's testing a while back, I haven't seen that these values have changed at all since then, so I'm assuming they're still the same. We have different modes and different pacings giving different XP rates. The big one at the launch of the game was Champion Hill. Beforehand, that was 496 XP on your weapon per kill. So you ranked up things incredibly fast, but after an adjustment here, a little bit after launch, it's now currently still at 193 XP per kill. So a huge nerf to that. TDM, we end up seeing that there's 136 per kill in tactical pacing, 124 per kill in assault, and 124 in blitz. Dom is 109 in tactical pacing and 99 in assault and blitz. Hardpoint is 104 XP per kill for tactical, 95 in assault and blitz. Kill confirmed, 101 in tactical, 92 in assault and blitz. FFA, 136 in tactical, 124 in assault and blitz. Patrol, 107 in tactical, 97 in assault, and 97 in blitz. And finally, SND of 150 in tactical, 136 in assault and 136 in blitz so as you can see it's kind of a messy distribution with nothing really evenly distributed however if you are looking for what pacing to play as you see tactical gives more xp per kill but with less players so perhaps a little bit less action on the opposite side blitz has a handful of more players and so has more action but assault has less players but offers the same xp totals so i'd take blitz over assault 
basically any day. Whether you find a significantly larger amount of XP in Blitz over Tactical, that's kind of hard to pinpoint. That min-maxing is so situationally based that it's almost impossible to nail down. However, what makes this more significantly odd is that XP values whenever you have a double XP token active or you have a double XP event going on like right now, those don't seem to always be acting as they should. They vary from offering only simply a 10% bonus XP yield upwards of 1.9 to actually a true two times bonus, but you'll get a ton of different varying values along the way that haven't quite been worked out just yet. These have been a problem for quite some time and still to this day seem to be offering up the same issues. So that can throw a significant wrench in things and the sort of consistency in the yield. Now zombies, that method is still there. I've heard talks that it's not as efficient that it was nerfed a little bit here. I've seen conflicting reports on that. All of my weapons are out of the early ranking phase that I did them all in, so I can't exactly tell if that's too much a change or if rates were actually decreased, but I've heard differing opinions. For those unaware though, the zombies method is to simply load into a zombies game solo, play either harvest or escort, and get 35 kills, then back out and start the entire process again. This is due to the XP scaling, offering more XP initially per game when you start out, as opposed to when you see more health and XP drop-offs from each individual zombie a little bit later into games. It's boring, tedious, but with double XP, especially when acting properly, it's a good way to get things done in a much more chill setting. For me, this was something that I did solely to avoid playing solo for a lot of the weapons that were just a huge pain. I just put on some music, a podcast, or jump into a Discord call with some of my friends, muted my game audio, and then mindlessly grinded it out. Now, naturally, this isn't going to help you with the weapon camos and MP, and thus what's usable in Warzone, but if you don't care about that, you don't want to deal with skill-based matchmaking or any inconsistencies of, like, bad teammates or anything like that, this is a solid alternative. What I will say though is that with the introduction of those two new modes here within Zombies as well, you're not seeing Harvest, you're not seeing Escort as much as you would beforehand when there are only three different game modes or whatever it was on offer. You'd see basically one of those every single game. I have had plenty of games where I didn't get either of those and then that unfortunately kills a ton of time. But the Zombies method still there if you're interested. But the reason we're discussing all of this again though is with Season 1 is because we have our weapons ported into Warzone, making it grindable there. And like we said, the reason this is so delayed is because there were so many changes to how things worked and ranked up since the launch of Season 1. Not even kidding, there were probably like a half a dozen changes that invalidated a lot of what we're discussing here with this. From nerfs to item removal to XP bonus removal, it's just been all moving targets and frustrating adjustments, whereas a player who just wants to know what to do, there was no solid answer because every single time there was some method that was found to maximize the XP for your time, Raven stepped in and was like, nah, you can't do that anymore. The biggest of those sort of air quote problematic pieces came in the way of plunder. Plunder for a couple of days at a time over the last couple of weeks had a few ways that you could level weapons fully in under an hour or so as sort of like pocket XP clusters. Will these pop out again? I'm not ruling anything out, but it might be a bit. They've ironed out quite a lot of these that have come into play, but such things including your contract multiplier that was present within plunder for your big game bounties as well as your top secret contracts. The big game bounties, if I'm not mistaken, retained it and still actually may be but they're just incrementally increasing where they were doubling in bonus before. The problemed one though was that of the top secret contract, which doubled each time and that's why they were removed, why we saw double XP removed from plunder as well. So they caused a lot of problems. Personally, I'd love to see these come back, but I'm sure Raven is keeping a keen eye on these ones. But the top secret contract introduced multipliers that you'd see with incremental bonuses larger than last. The top secret though was different though because each time you completed one, it wouldn't move ahead by one, but instead two in that incremental increase. So where you're climbing this ladder of bonuses where each one increases, you were going ahead two rungs instead of one. So you had a bonus multiplier that went crazy, a contract that was progressing you at double speed for the contract completion multiplier, and then you also had things like Point Man, which would start you out at the first tier of a contract completion as if you'd already completed one right when the game started. So for a time being, that was one of the strategies. There also was the strategy where you could jump in and land hot, say somewhere like Airfield or Peak, 
more consistently i find more gunfights at airfield though long term and then also just farm things like bounty contracts and big game bounties but don't care if they're poached on a regular bounty you'll get 150 weapon xp per poaching of that and 250 on a big game bounty if you complete either of those it's 750 weapon xp for completing those but if you mix high kill games with those bonuses you end up getting you'll start to get absurd amounts of xp then you put on double xp zoomed through even further and then when it was there to my knowledge it still is in regular br and things like that the bugs double weapon xp stacking where you popped a token on top of an event that was global and you got four times the modifier so those kind of things were popping up where you'd end up being able to level your weapons from 1 to 70 in about an hour's time but those problematic things again will probably just pop up once every so often the more so standard things you'll of course see are your contract farming like supply runs those are still beneficial but they aren't nearly as fast as what we just mentioned of course if you do this you end up getting 500 weapon xp per contract completion you can end up doing 10 to 15 of these depending on if you have a team with you solo if there's a good amount of supply run contracts in each match whatever the case there's a lot of variables here and it may vary very well differ for you but it is something that each one of those will yield you 500 weapon xp if you pop on a double xp token that's 1000 and so therefore you can breeze through it but again it will just take a little bit of time it's one of those things like zombies that is kind of just a mindless grind here at this you turn off your game audio put on some music whatever the case and you can still breeze through these now the traditional br experience right now does seem to have a little bit of some busted things as well but because they're one life modes it is a little bit more risk reward and not something that's super consistent but before jump into those a final reminder my friends over at gamer advantage are still having that 20 percent off discount going on 10 percent off site-wide an additional 10 percent off if you use code espresso if you're interested in protecting your vision health and getting the best blue light glasses on the market i swear by these guys if you're working at a computer gaming or even looking at your phone for prolonged periods of time blue light can have some lasting long-term effects on your vision health gamer advantage glasses are the most comfortable durable and lightweight frames on the market i've used so many pairs before them and none of them come even close to gamer advantage advantage I promise you that not to mention if you need a prescription they can custom tailor these lenses specifically for you and your insurance can help cover that cost if you're interested in learning a little bit more or taking advantage of the final deal of 2021 check the link in the description below but back to the br the battle royale aspect here of this there's currently a method that's making the rounds across reddit and other locations but to contract farm like you do in plunder but on rebirth island land get your loadout get a weapon that you want to rank up and then just farm supply run contracts now this isn't exactly new we saw this before with black ops cold war but it's a lesser used strategy right now because there's no real guarantee like plunder it of course needs you to get your own weapon out of a loadout it needs you to get a helicopter and it needs you to get multiple supply run contracts the reason why it's popular though is because the stacking of a double xp token on a double xp event does actually work here in this as of right now so it is quad xp and so therefore you can breeze through it so just know that this does work but again a lot more high risk versus reward at that point because it is a singular or limited life game mode i will say that if you're just simply using a weapon and ranking it up in caldera in br that seems to have that double xp stacking as well with a token stacking on top of a double xp event for quad xp one of our friends that we normally play with was ranking up his weapons in no time after getting just a handful of kills two three four five kills each game of br with a non-leveled weapon so that's something that can help you out greatly if you do decide to take advantage of that stacking while there is an event but what's the verdict personally I don't know that I can give you a definitive answer encompassing all playstyles. There's seriously still so many variables across either XP that doesn't work as intended within Vanguard or just inconsistencies in contract spawns, what type of engagements you'll have in Warzone and things like that. So I'll put them into subcategories. If you like grinding for camos, making progress at the same time towards that, Vanguard MP definitely. If you want to chill out, not really worry too much about outside factors, the zombies method works and also say plunder contract farming as well for those supply runs but if you want to try and take some high risks get those high xp rewards but it may fluctuate in terms of your efficiency that rebirth island method or doing so in battle royale also is something you can do in caldera so it really comes down to what you feel the most comfortable with but right now there are a handful of different methods you can play around with in either vanguard or warzone to maximize your xp yield for weaponry so that's where we're gonna wrap it up i'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below what are you guys gonna be doing the most here out of this is there anything in particular that's 
stands out to you. Whatever the case may be, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on the video. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing running all things Warzone, Vanguard, anything COD related. We got you covered here on the channel. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.